Hello everyone. Today's interesting topic is levator palpebrae superioris. This muscle is made easy in this presentation. So, welcome to Logic Medico, understanding the concepts in medicine. If you are new to my channel, consider subscribing and pressing the bell button in the lower right corner. So coming back to levator palpebrae superioris muscle. The location of this muscle of course it is in the head and neck region. To be more specific it is there. It is there here. That is above the eyeball within the orbit. So as the name suggests levator means it will elevate. Palpebrae means eyelid. There are two eyelids superior and inferior eyelid. So it is related to superior eyelid. So that is a precise location of it. To understand this in depth, let us go step by step. This is a conical structure called orbit. We have two orbits. Okay, that conical structure on sagittal section. This is how it is visible. This is the facial surface of the orbit, the base of the cone, and this is the apex of the cone directed towards the posterior aspect. So this is the orbit outline. You can make out maxillary air sinus. So this levator palpebrae superioris will be there between the eyeball and the roof of the orbit. It will be over here. Okay, that is a precise location of the levator palpebrae superioris. So here is the outline of the eyeball. Here is the orbit. So to understand the origin, the insertion and action of this muscle in detail, there is little bit of orientation required with respect to certain structures. So let's see those structures. So this is the orbit and this is the eyeball. That is the first orientation. Subsequently you have to understand this is the eyelid. We have two eyelid, the superior eyelid and the inferior eyelid. Of course, this is the eyelash. Okay. So there are two eyelids, superior eyelid and the inferior eyelid. So that is the first orientation. So the framework of the eyelid is actually made up of a connective tissue plate called as tarsal plate. Okay. So this is a second framework, this is a skin of the eyelid and we can take it as a connective tissue framework of the eyelid called as tarsal plate. Now within this tarsal plate there is very interesting and in front of this eyeball, see here, this structure. This structure is called as conjunctiva. So we have got oriented to three things. Number one, the eyelid, the skin of the eyelid, the tarsal plate that also belongs to eyelid and the conjunctiva. That part of the conjunctiva covering the eyeball is called bulbar conjunctiva and that part of the conjunctiva covering the eyelid is called palpebral conjunctiva. The junction between the two is called as fornix, F-O-R-N-I-X. This is the superior conjunctival fornix, so inferior conjunctival fornix. For time being, kindly remember, eyelid is there, tarsal plate and conjunctiva is there. Three aspects are there. So, levator palpebrae superior is evolutionary. There is one muscle like this, which is above and parallel to the eyeball, straight to the eyeball and parallel to the eyeball. So it's called a superior rectus. The detached part or the delaminated part of the superior rectus is considered to be levator palpebrae superioris. So this superior rectus causes elevation of the eyeball. That is, the eyeball will turn upwards in order to look skywards. Okay. So this muscle will get slightly detached, few fibers will slightly get deta detached to give rise to levator palpebrae superioris. So that is the overall understanding in evolutionary aspect. So this levator palpebrae superioris will be there. I already told you at the junction between the eyeball and the roof of the orbit over here it will be there. So let's see the origin of this. The levator palpebrae superioris takes origin from the roof of the orbit, of course. The roof of the orbit in the posterior most aspect that is to be more specific from the lesser wing of the spinoid bone. The orbital surface of the lesser wing of the spinoid bone that is the origin. In simpler terminology we can tell roof of the orbit posterior aspect. Then it continues to go forwards at the junction between the eyeball and the roof of the orbit where it splits up into three laminas. The three laminas you can see better in the previous picture. So this is the insertion. It splits up into three lamina, the superficial, intermediate and the deep lamina. So here the superficial lamina is going to the eyelid. If you are told, then it's correct answer. The intermediate lamina is going to the 
plus is green color tarsal plate if you are told then it's a correct answer the deep lamina is going to this structure conjunctiva to be more specific the superior conjunctival fornix or the bend so that is the insertion so here is the muscle levator palpebrae superioris of course it goes to the eyelid but in eyelid there are various layers the skin of the eyelid the tarsal plate of the eyelid and the palpebral conjunctiva with the fornix so that will be the insertion here is the entire muscle belly okay so that is the origin and insertion of the levator palpebrae superioris so this levator palpebrae superioris what can be the action upon contraction what can happen when the orbit will move towards the eyeball or i mean orbit will move towards the eyelid or eyelid will get lifted up just think about it eyelid will get lifted up or orbit will go towards it the eyelid will get lifted up therefore the name like this levator just add a e in front of it elevator of which eyelid superior eyelid the other name of palpebrae is eyelid so the main action of this muscle is to elevate the upper eyelid so how much long can you elevate just think you are holding an object in your hand for around half an hour after that your muscle will start aching right you tend to drop the object or keep the object on the table that is because of fatigue like that what do you think happens when the levator palpebrae superior undergoes fatigue that time you will blink okay that is the mechanism of blinking that is a bonus answer which i am telling you in this when there is a fatigue of levator palpebrae superioris you have elevated your eyelid you want to see continuously at something but you tend to blink in between for a fraction of a second that is because of resting of this muscle levator palpebrae superioris taking rest or it's undergoing fatigue so that is the phenomenon of being blinking in addition to that there is a tear which is flowing in the conjunctiva brought about by the lacrimal gland during this blinking what happens the tear film will be evenly spread across the front of the cornea or the eyeball so this eyelids will act like a wiper for the windshield of the uh, of the car glass there will be wiper now so we also have wiper and that is nothing but a eyelid so nature has provided us levator palpebrae superior to elevate the eyelid once it undergoes fatigue it naturally dips down so it will wipe the whatever secretions are there here that is a tear film or the lacrimal fluid evenly so that always our cornea will remain transparent that is also function of levator palpebrae superioris come to the nerve supply the third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve supplies this levator palpebrae superioris so what happens the third cranial nerve has got two divisions upper division lower division by common sense upper division goes to supply superior rectus following which following which subsequently subsequently it ends up supplying the levator palpebrae superioris because levator palpebrae superioris is a detached part of superior rectus so once it is supplies superior rectus ultimately the fibers few fibers go across the superior rectus to supply levator palpebrae superioris so the nerve supplies mainly the oculomotor nerve or the third cranial nerve here is the levator palpebrae superioris the third cranial nerve or oculomotor nerve comes from under surface of it after supplying superior rectus it ends by supplying the levator palpebrae superioris okay so come to the action i already told you the action what can be the action when the muscle contracts what happens to the eyelid this is the tarsal plate and the eyelids what will happen it will open up like this because the muscle contracts it will shorten the length of the muscle contract it will lift the eyelid so that you can the eyeball or the cornea is now visible to the exterior see here it's closed but here it's open now so that you can see the external environment so that is the action so what happens it undergoes fatigue means what will happen it will leave this for a fraction of a second that time there will be blinking response okay so now supply levator palpebrae superior is supplied by oculomotor nerve okay third cranial nerve after supplying this superior rectus it ends by supplying this here it ends by supplying superior rectus and passing through that it will go and supply levator palpebrae superioris from the under surface of it so there is one interesting condition called as horner syndrome okay this horner syndrome there is a damage damage to this <coughs> nerve supply for the levator palpebrae superioris indirectly i am talking of this muscle which is present in the tarsal plate it's called the muller's muscle this muller's muscle is believed to be a part of sympathetic nervous system so whenever a person is getting angry their eyeball will widen will widen like this it will widen 
so that it shows the sense of anger okay so what happens in horner syndrome basically is there is a following symptoms of the horner syndrome there is a drooping of the upper eyelid that is called as ptosis there is persistent uh, constriction of the pupil that is called as meiosis and one side of the head and neck especially the face there is a lack of sweating that is anhydrosis so all these whatever i am telling usually sweating or dilatation of the pupil or widening of the palpebral fissure is a sign of sympathetic nervous system when there is a damage to the inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia which is a part of uh, sympathetic nervous system because of either a cervical rib or something a damage in the root of the neck or cancer in the apex of the lung or tuberculosis in the apex apex of the lung which will cause compression of inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia so the sympathetic nerve fibers will not be able to control this so therefore sympathetic nervous system usually cause dilatation of pupil but now it causes constriction of pupil which is called as meiosis sympathetic nervous system usually causes sweating sweat, sweating in one side of the face so now it can't do the sweating so it's called anhydrosis that part of the levator palpebrae superioris which is present within the eyelid will be now called as muller's muscle okay it is controlled by autonomic nervous system or sympathetic nervous system so whenever the person is getting anger angry when they are getting angry upon some other things there will be widening of this fissure that shows that they are getting anger but there is a damage of sympathetic nervous system so there will be drooping of this upper eyelid and the drooping of the upper eyelid is called as ptosis so this is a classical of horner's syndrome that is a bonus point in summary levator palpebrae superioris is one of the extra ocular muscle it is located within the orbit origin from the roof of the orbit to be more specific orbital surface of the lesser wing of the spinoid it travels forwards parallel to the superior rectus and eyeball just above that plastered between itself between the roof of the orbit and the eyeball then ultimately it splits up into three slips the superficial slip will go to the dermis of the skin of the superior eyelid the intermediate slip will go to the tarsal plate which is now called as muller's muscle the deepest slip will go to the conjunctiva to be more specific superior conjunctival fornix the action of this muscle is elevation of upper eyelid when the muscle undergoes sweating it will leave the upper eyelid down that is in action of blinking the nerve supply of that is third cranial nerve to be more specific upper division of the oculomotor nerve or third cranial nerve that is a summary of oculomotor nerve and levator palpebrae superioris damage to this muscle can cause lag of thalamus that is the eyelid will be lagging behind or drooping of the upper eyelid can be called as ptosis which happens in a syndrome called as horner syndrome h o r n e r apostrophe s horner syndrome so that is about levator palpebrae superioris don't forget to like and share this video with your family and friends don't forget to press the thumbs up button subscribe to our channel and press the bell button to get the latest notification of video thank you once again for your time to watch this complete video and learn from it thank you